Hello and welcome back to Deep Drive, our weekly podcast powered by Kotak Mahindra Prime. Now this week it's a very special episode. It's not the typical episode. It's about us. It's about 25 years of Autocar, what the journey has been like, and I've got with me someone who's been there for 25 years and more as well, Shapur Kotwal. Hi. It's been a long journey and uh, I can't believe that sort of memories we have associated with it the challenges the really fun stuff we've done the tough bits you know when we were starting out we were hardly known and that that's right i i think uh, uh, let's go back to the story of how autocar started exactly i think uh, shapur you were there in 97 we were all at auto auto india yeah and uh, uh, great great times there honestly yeah. ashok advani was uh, a great boss for me i was working for him uh auto india at that time we ruled the roost didn't we uh mm-hmm. i i think uh, there was no other mag uh, there were hardly any auto media in fact i think we were at that time uh you know st- sharing the platform with business newspapers like economic times yeah. uh hardly any auto mags around no social media no nothing and uh, then um, i think th- things got tough yeah. uh obviously business india the pe- flagship group in trouble and uh, we uh, had to start uh, looking um, elsewhere i don't know if you remember those were pretty tough times at that point exactly but but i want to ask you when was it that you started looking for a new thing you know how did that process start i think uh, you know it it happened when um, uh, jeremy won who uh, came down a good friend from haymarket was making a routine visit to uh, india it was sometime in 98 uh and uh, he wanted to start license f1 racing of course there was no kind of uh, let's say opportunity for that uh but you know he market also on auto car and uh, i had that in mind and then uh, finally i think when things were getting a little difficult uh you know i thought why not speak to him the the, the funny part is i never had any ambition of starting uh a car magazine of my own i was quite happy working at auto india as we all were in because we just loved doing what we did was to exactly. drive great cars uh, and write about them uh that was really uh, everything at that point and you know if auto india ceased to exist it meant that we couldn't do what we enjoyed doing yeah. and i think not many people know but i knocked on a lot of doors um i went to uh, arun puri of india today at that point uh, i went to media transasia Uh, at that point to see if they wanted to start a magazine uh, and uh, you know i i think i even went to nari hira who is unfortunately passed away of magna would he want to start a magazine gave them all pitches and proposals but it was pretty lukewarm interest i think maybe at that time also the auto industry hadn't developed uh, yeah, it was in a nascent stage at that time exactly so then uh, i think uh, i said then well if they aren't interested i'll have to start it on my own and uh, i tried to look for investment uh, uh, again really I didn't manage to get uh, anything uh, over there uh, but uh, clearly just we started off on an absolute shoestring uh, office was in a garage of mine uh, at Dickensy Road just a uh, commercial office a commercial office where I used to do a lot of photography yeah. and uh, that's when we started out and uh, then I called up Jeremy and said hey listen uh would you be interested in uh, doing auto car at that time and uh, he said yeah sure Uh, really just say it out sure yeah let's talk about it but yeah. you know they were a little cool and funnily at that time uh, we had another german publisher motor press with the magazine auto motor and sport which was also to be honest wooing me and in fact they were showing a lot more interest this this was exactly when late 97 or 98 it was 98 late 98 uh, also uh, at that point and uh, i think remember we had one meeting in at home also at that time looking at uh, both uh, exactly. auto motor and sport and exactly. imran who was uh, you know one of our original guys uh, ajit dalvi uh, who was with us for a long time still writes for us for ap uh, we were all considering what to do auto car auto motor and sport and it was a pretty tough decision actually because auto motor and sport were really wooing me and frankly not many people know that i almost signed up with uh, motor press for auto motor and sport uh, german magazine real flagship magazine at that time and i was going to the geneva show in uh, 99 it was march uh, 99 geneva was always in march 99 to tell the haymarket guys like sorry guys i'm going with auto motor and sport at that time they 
completely freaked out, panicked. And I think uh, I was kind of attacked from, I never saw the show that year, but just meeting all these guys, having meetings, what to do. And I think um, finally, Eric Warden Rowe was the managing director at that time. He just gave me his phone. That and famous said, phone story. The, the famous phone story and said, uh, give it back to me in London. And he pushed off. And uh, frankly, I was there with his phone. His wife called up and he, uh, heard this guy with a strange accent. She thought, you know, his phone has been pinched or robbed. But uh, anyway, a short story is, uh, instead of going to Stuttgart to sign the deal with Motor, uh, Motor Press, I went to London. And of course, you know, I think the my heart was with Autocar. It's just that they were not as, uh, let's receptive. say, they, as receptive or as keen as uh, Motorpress and, and, was. Motorpress at the time were also size-wise, they were much more, much larger. They were much bigger. I mean, Motor, right? uh, you know, it was, uh, I think, one of the biggest uh, German magazines. At that point, then we said, okay, uh, we'll go with Autocar. And this was, so, and this, between this and September, that's not much of a gap, almost. No, that's not much of a gap. So that everything was, was really done. quick. Yeah, that was really quick. It was all done. We shook hands. We signed the deal. Uh, I think uh, we signed in March. First issue out in September '99. As you remember how it was, it was like your first baby being born. We'll never forget Absolutely. this uh, Absolutely. auto car. Our first uh, issue uh, with the Ford Icon. It was a world exclusive. Exactly. What a what a story to start with. Absolutely. It, it kind of set the tone Absolutely. for what we were. You know, first with the news. Uh, our I think our content. Still, we keep breaking stories exactly. constantly. We managed to do that. And that hasn't stopped even after 25 years. So I think, exactly. you know, for all the breaking news, uh, we continue to do that. Not easy to do, as you know. Uh, but I think this was great. This sort of set the tone. It was actually a great time to launch a car magazine. There was Ford coming in. Honda was getting serious. That's right. So Indian industry, d in 93, everyone and their uncle was coming in. Big stampede of cars. So really, we were at the right time. And I think we were born in what I call the golden age of motoring. Absolutely. Why I say that? Cars were cheaper. The taxes were not high. I mean, an icon, five and a half, six lakhs. I mean, imagine that for a car like this. Uh, you had, you know, the, the highways coming up in that in that period in the, in the next decade or so. So Vajpayee government had really pushed on the highway. So you had fabulous roads coming. The expressway was... Yeah, that, you that. didn't have cars throttled with uh, emission regulations, to be honest. So they were much more responsive, easier to drive. You had the advent of fuel injection, which really transformed the performance of cars, which was phenomenal. You still had the hydraulic steering and not EPS, which has yeah. dulled the driving experience. So I think really it was the golden age. It was a fun time to... Uh, you know, enjoy cars. You you had choice. Uh, you know, improving all the time. You had the city with performance at one end. Exactly. Then you had the icon with the great engine responsiveness and the handling. So it was a great time to be an enthusiast with access to the cars. Exactly. I think for enthusiasts, it was a great time. And I think uh, you know, since then, uh, it's it's just been you know we've been at been happy to be at the cutting edge of the industry. Who would have imagined it would have been transformed the way it has? Not only from the way the cars are, but the way media has. I mean, at that time, print was it. It was a much easier world. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we just had one magazine to, uh, you know, think about. Yes, you know, the online space had come and you had that first dot-com boom of the 2000s, uh, which, uh, to be honest, we didn't really capture at that point. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we were really focused on print. Print was strong. Print was growing. Print was everything at that point. And uh, I, think I think... If you tell people, we started with uh, transparencies. That's right, yeah. I mean, we, it was no digital world, so it had to go through all those processes. I think, I remember the first digital cover we had or with a digital camera. It was the Nikon D70. Yes. And it was uh, November 2005. Again, a significant issue. It was our 75th issue. By the way, Hormuz can remember every single <laughs> issue of Autocar and what was in it. No, I'm not joking. No, no, I you, think... When you meet him, you can test him on this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I just remember certain issues and uh, the Ford Fiesta was on the cover. Yeah. Uh, again, that was an exclusive and that was our first uh, digital uh, cover or, or shot with a digital camera. Until then, it was all transparency. Yeah. So, we've seen how it's pivoted. I think what people need to know, the way we started, actually, we were a startup. If exactly. you look at it, we were just exactly. raw people who started it. Exactly. Uh, you were there, Shapur, Ajit was there. And of course, we grew to have uh, Eldred and, and, and all the designers. Right. Who I mean, the main design team. We started in a shoebox of an office uh, on uh, in Raghuvanshi Mills. And now we've grown to our fifth office, which is now 
uh, the, this beautiful office we have over here. Yeah, which incorporates a studio. Exactly. It is in our office right now. That's right. I think really what I want to talk about, and it's super important, I think the success of Autocar is Autocar India is because of our partnership with Haymarket and Autocar. And I think I can't overstate that enough. It's been a phenomenal partnership uh, with the Hazeltile family uh, who own uh, Haymarket and the senior leadership over there. So after Jeremy, you know, Jim James had come down, I want to call out all these people, uh, the current CEO, Kevin Costello, uh, you know, Brian Freeman, who was has really been a rock through everything right from the beginning. In fact, uh, he was amused when we used to call a little hole in the wall the studio. He saw that he was yeah. quite shocked to think that was our office. Uh, he's been the finance guy. Uh, we've had, um, you know, Rupert Heseltine, uh, you know, has been, uh, and, and Michael, just been phenomenal support. It's been absolutely like a family working with Haymarket. And, uh, you know, they've just been an amazing kind of partner to have. And I think one record is, I don't think there has been a joint venture that has lasted so long in the media space as ours has. So really, I think it's, uh, uh, you know, I, I have to really point that out that uh, I think the majority of our success goes to a very solid partnership with Haymarket, which have been absolutely brilliant. I mean, they've put up with uh, a lot of my uh, so-called, uh, what they call, uh, you know, Parsi behavior, a little. Yeah. Little but also, dirty. also, always there's massive respect for you in that place. They understand. Well, yeah. They understand where you're coming from. The kind of exclusives that I, you I, to do. I think you know. To be honest, Shapur, we our thought process is in the same direction. You know, when you have that, yeah. uh, I think it just makes it easier. You know, they know we want the best content. Exactly. They know we'll push for the best content. So you know, it's all about product first. Yeah. And uh, they've been absolutely phenomenal and supportive. And and frankly, if you ask me. I think in terms of quality, creativity, I mean, the UK guys just do it, still do it so much better than us. We still have so much to learn. Always. It's always the fact that we want to make it better. We're still trying to make our pages better, apart yeah. from videos and other content and online content. But it's still that fight to make it better, to make it, you know, look nicer, more readable, more interesting, more fun, you know, all the elements. Exactly. Just like when we started. Yeah. I think, you know, 25 years, uh, just looking back, um, uh, uh, you know, we'd like to talk about some of our, our, our greatest hits. I think the, the exclusive, um, you know, obviously being the first issue, September 99, the exclusive, world exclusive, the icon on the cover, that will always be special. Ford is not in India anymore. Hopefully they are coming back. But, uh, you know, uh, it was a very special car and it was an enthusiast car. And really the first time the world had ever seen it was on our cover. I think we did a lot of fun stuff along the way. Of course, the exclusives continued. Now the second issue, again, we had uh, another exclusive, which was the Hyundai Accent. And, you know, we just went on and on getting the cars. And uh, frankly, we would go to all ends of the earth to drive a car. I remember sending you off to Brazil to drive the EcoSport. Yeah, that was a 24-hour connecting flight, which, which uh, after which I was like days for a day. But getting yeah. that, getting hold of that car was worth it. Yeah, and we were paying for it. So it was the economy all the way halfway across the world and back. So I can yeah. imagine that. So, yeah, I think... Uh, uh, that has happened, but I think uh, we've also had a lot of fun along the way. Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, driving a Formula One car uh, in 2001, uh, I, I remember I, that. I think you can still remember every small bit of that experience. Absolutely. And, and you know, it was actually, to be honest, two days after 9-11. So, it was, uh, I like remember that. that Frank Woodrow just remember. after that, I remember. Exactly. Uh, I think we've done some phenomenal road trips uh, which uh, now a lot of people do but I think we were pioneering road trips such that the long ones I think it was the long ones ASEAN was the first uh, ASEAN uh, uh, yeah we did ASEAN was uh, one of the first ones uh, absolutely uh, then we did uh, Germany to India and India to uh, Paris uh, uh, we have done Southeast Asia a couple of times so I think to be honest I don't think any media has done these kind of crazy large format cross country trips the way we have but I think one of the trips which is really unique and special was our first uh, Kashmir to Kanyakumari or what we call Kargil to Kanyakumari and we termed the term K2K. K2K was actually coined by us. I don't think you'll find it before uh, 2001, uh, which is when we did this. Yeah, exactly. I remember us trying, we were trying to decide whether it sounds you know smart enough or is it difficult to understand, but it worked so well. It K2K. worked really well. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So that was an epic trip in a Maruti 800 and a Mercedes E-Class, two extremes of the uh, of, of the market at that yeah. point. 
I think also, I think another high moment for us is when we got auto car on the rear wing of the Jordan. Well, that was, you know, yeah, absolutely. And and just to see Narain and, you know, with the car. And, and I think he started his journey with Ford as well, right? Thomas? That's right. He started his journey with Ford as well. So I think, but of course, I think the Tata sponsorship was exactly. something actually, which really yeah. got him that. And then we had, uh, uh, you know, we had, Autocar was very much on the rear. There, exactly. You know, in, with the first Indian in Formula One. Those were really heady days. Absolutely. 2005. And talking about Tata sponsorship, I think another thing which we were really proud of is uh, Ratan Tata would give us an annual interview for an anniversary issue regularly for many years. He was there. Yeah, I think he was a reader also. No, we, could, we can say that, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. He definitely was a reader. I mean, uh, you know, we used to send him a copy every month and he would definitely read it. But I think. The fact that we could get him for our annual issue every month, that's yeah. why, you know, I'm really going to miss him. We still used to have our chats, you know, a legend of a, a man, a wonderful human being. And uh, I think, uh, you know, so again, uh, having him in every anniversary issue also made that very special. Just gave that extra weight to the issue. Exactly. exactly. And, you know, again, over there, we're proud to say that, you know, we've spoken to really some of the uh, top guys, uh, Osamu Suzuki again. Uh, yeah. Just uh, incredible meeting him. Uh, what a man he is! Uh, and I you had a thought. great connection with him, also, right? Well, yeah, I think we just connected there. Uh, I got him to sign uh, uh, a big picture of my SS80, which I still have. He's autographed that. It's still up on my wall, and uh, of course, he still says that is his all-time favorite Suzuki. And I can understand why. And even at that age, when I met him, it was uh, 2015, so he would have been around 85 at that time. Uh, sharp as a tack and you know he's still going strong right now at uh, yeah. 94 so uh, um, amazing and of course I think you know it's just been fantastic to being at that cutting edge of the industry and uh, you know just being able to report it um, uh, you know as 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 events unfold I think Shapur I'd like you to talk about that I think one of the things we've really done which no one else has done is how closely we worked with the armed forces be it sea land yeah. or air Actually, that, that whole thing started because of where we used to test. We wanted to test in the best track possible and we'd go all the way to VRD. No expressway, Ahmadnagar would take sometimes 6, 7 hours, 8 hours to reach. And then we couldn't make it back on the same day. So we used to stay in that guest house, the DRDO guest house. Yeah, where you got bitten by bees one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was a traumatic day. <laughs> but uh, at that DRDO guest house, we would be spending the, the night over there and people in the next room, they were designing a lot of the military vehicles and they would come to look at our cars. We'd go and see their vehicles. And, we, you know, there was this rapport developing. And then one day, one of them says, why don't you do a story on all this we're making? You know, you, you do every car. Why don't you do one of these? So that's when the idea germinated. And also, Autocar UK had this uh, annual sort of story where they would do something different, a different machine. And it yeah, a huge a Christmas uh, test. Christmas test. They had a huge amount of uh, interest in that. So the first one, I, I, I remember I just spoke to this gentleman called Grover. I still remember him. And he's the one who said, my vehicle is not ready. I know I spoke to you about it. But you can test the Arjun main battle tank. And that's when we went down to Avdi in Chennai. That was the first one. Yeah, that's right. 2004. I yeah. And, and the thing was, they wanted us to verify that the tank had enough of a power to weight ratio. I think we V-boxed it. We V-boxed it. It was on the, on the request of the chief engineer. And he said, we set up the gearing. We have this uh, MTU Mercedes diesel engine. And it's got... Great power. Please test it and give us the figures independently. So we actually tested that tank, put out figures. And I mean, that was pretty incredible. And Shapur, I think the big ones really with the Lambo Huracan, because really it had that so-called uh, fighter jet sort of... Yeah, it was inspired. In design inspiration. Was yeah, exactly. So that's why we chose it. I think once with the Sukhoi and uh, once with the uh, MiG-29. Yeah. It was just unbelievable. That MiG-29 video, I think, is our most watched video. Yeah, it's currently at 6 million views. And uh, I can remember getting that together and how we finally got both on the same runway and actually did a proper, honest-to-God, drag race. And I, I couldn't believe that towards the end of the runway, it's a really long runway, and we were going close to 300, sometimes crossing that because the aircraft took off at 280 kph. So uh, I was somewhat afraid to even tell people this. But uh, I remember once when we were on a flight to Goa and you asked me, what speed did you do? And I said, 300. <laughs> wow. And that was Goa airfield. Yeah, that was Goa. That was the long uh, military airfield, which is also used commercially. So the Double takeoff M. speed was 280 k's for the MiG-29. That was the flight takeoff speed. Unbelievable. And and uh, Shapur, the other one was the 
uh, with the Sukhoi and the Hurakan at Pune Airfield. Exactly, and of course, like we remember, the car created such a sensation. The entire squadron came out to see the car. All the pilots, we thought, you know, they'd be reserved and cool, but seeing this car on the tarmac that really, you know, got all of them down. We used those pictures also. The I, around it. I think you know, if you're flying fighter jets. At uh, whatever market exactly. plus, exactly you you are going to have an affinity for this. Exactly, it's the same sort of audience. Yeah, they they, they love cars. They have their own fast bikes, cars. Most of them are riders. Yeah, exactly. And, and obviously, you know, uh, their kind of hand-eye coordination is even more phenomenal and reflexes. Kind of fight, uh, flying a fighter. Absolutely, that. and and including the the recent one we did with the Air Force with the Surya Kirans. You know, that the skill level for that. Each of these guys are from the the best of the best squadron. It's almost like a Top Gun selection, and the the kind of skill level that they have and they display that's just that's right. unbelievable. And that's there in our twenty fifth issue. So twenty fifth issue also again as always packed with special stories. And Shapur's uh, Surya Kiran feature is here in that. Yeah. So really, we've done a lot with the armed forces. Really proud of that. I think uh, I think we even worked uh, did a lot with the BRO uh, Border Roads Organization. Right. Took a Lambo to. Uh, Urus all the way to Umlingla. Umlingla, exactly. That was again an epic story. Exactly. Yeah, the planning during the lockdown. I remember we were just discussing that and we how it evolved. That was exactly. fantastic. Yeah. So and I think uh, you know, I think we we even set a lot of records along the way. I think still starting for the official BIC lap record officially uh, certified by FMSA. I still not in in the uh, GT3 RS right now, the new one. Yeah. And we've been setting records for the last uh, couple of years. Then there were the speeds records with the Audi first. Exactly. And the Audi uh, Pininfarina. 332. And I think, you know, before anyone got close, we knocked it out of the park, uh, set a uh, top speed record of 358. That was in uh, Andor, on the track. On that track. track and track, I think yeah. uh, Renuka did around 357 and became yeah. the fastest Indian woman in the world. So really, really proud moments over there. Done a lot of uh, crazy stuff. I think at the heart of it, um, you know, I think what uh, we like to believe is that, you know, we've kind of uh, stayed true to the brand, which is, uh, you know, authentic, credible, in a way, even serious. I think our road tests reflect that the kind of data we give in, the kind of testing we do. at Real world fuel efficiency. Absolutely. I spend a lot doing that, but uh, we need to get the right figures. Exactly. We spent so much time, so much effort, so much expense to get the right performance figures in the right place standardization, the right equipment. I mean, you bought some really expensive stuff back in the day. Fuel economy, the time we spent doing that. And today, even electric cars, we've gone down to that. Our, our testing is the most thorough. So I think people have, you know, if, if we put out figures, people know that they're real. Then they, There's no sort of, you know, leeway over there. And we've been doing it for so many years that now it's we are the benchmark. Now, over the years, we've had a lot of our content, you know, bracketed in different ways. But, you know, looking at road tests, data, you know, helpline, AAA, which do you think are the most important things and which were the most important? Yeah, yeah I think that way Autocar is very structured, you know, you know what to expect in each issue, you know where things are, just the way it is, it's kind of, you know, gives you that uh, comfort, you know, gives you the familiarity. I think, if you ask me, I think probably one of the most viewed sections in the magazine is the data section at the back. Yeah. And I think, I have to say this one story or one incident where, you know, after COVID, uh, magazine exactly. sales had gone down. When we, when we dropped it. Right? That's right. And and then, you know, magazine sales had gone down, but then they started picking up rapidly after COVID. So the sales were going up of the mag. Uh, they were bouncing back. But uh, paper was also expensive. So, you know, you print more, you spend more. So we thought we would halve the data section of the yeah. Mac because we had about 40 fields here. You had over 200 fields online. So we thought yeah. just, you know, cut the uh, pages and say that, for more data, you can go online. The backlash we got was crazy. People threatened to s cancel their subscriptions, exactly. saying, "I buy the magazine to flick through at the to look at the, the data at the back." And this actually went to tell me that there is a phenomenal resilience in print. There is a certain flick factor. People want to Absolutely. have a digital detox. They like the form. People like the physical hard copy. And, you know, whilst, uh, you know, a lot of people have proclaimed our death over the years, print is going to die. You know, that's not going to happen in yeah. the foreseeable future. Purely because there is a strong and crusty audience which loves the printed product and looks forward to it every month. I think that was one thing. 
the other is our confidential section exactly. which uh, yeah we uh, we always have something there a lot of the industry say they go straight to that first yeah. to see what we've written a lot of it comes true at the end what i'm really proud of is our you know consumer advice and help we've done our triple a section exactly. that we in really that we have uh, answer all kinds of thing ask auto car anything it literally is ask auto car anything you know whether you want the helpline also which... yeah so ask auto yeah, yeah. Uh, in you know ask auto car anything whether you want to change uh, you know moving from one state to the other do you need to uh, you know let's say re register your car to uh, what oil you should put in your car how if you want to modify a car and of course to buying to buying advice which car should i buy which is really the core of that but i think i'm also very proud of the helpline where we have actually helped hundreds of readers maybe now thousands of readers interacting with them and the manufacturer to sort out some problem and it's really satisfying when a lot of readers tell us that you know it's really that's thanks that's to that's autocar my problem got sorted because i think the last thing a manufacturer want is to have that problem printed in the magazine it's not good exactly. exactly so i think these are the sort of things which have really kind of you know worked well for us and i think also what's really changed in 25 years other than the cars is the shape of our industry i mean if you see it's a completely different industry it's a 60 degree platform everything is social media digital youtube exactly glad to say that you know we are up there as well absolutely uh, we've got some good numbers over there and overall 360 degree i think we still are you know manage to kind of keep our so called uh how do i say our uh, credibility our name exactly. and i'm glad to know that you know autocar still is probably the most well known automotive media brand and most people write to us and tell us they love the style of our review the delivery how how we get everything right we, you know we, we we position it properly and that's what they sort of love and keep coming back for more whatever the medium whether it's a magazine the website or you know even youtube today. that's right and you know i think things will keep evolving we also have to keep evolving i think sometimes we need to be a little faster we've yeah. got uh, younger audiences we've got different audiences yeah. i think one thing is clear is that you know one thing won't change is that we will be true to brand uh we are going to still focus on let's say our two core pillars which is great news uh, super reviews and of course doing a lot of features and the fun stuff which makes autocar what it is but it's been an uh, amazing journey and amazing uh, 25 years i'm also proud to say that you know um, i think we've had a lot of continuity we've got a lot of our team members shapur being one of them right there from day one most of our team members have been with us for a long long time and i think it's this continuity this kind of stability in the organization we have and this focus of being what we are and maybe not deviating too much from our brand some people say that you know we need to adapt uh, you know be quite different but i think uh, our audience comes to us because of what we are and, and what we always deliver and what we always have so i think as we say you know yeah. uh, uh, auto car uh, i i think 25 years has been a phenomenal journey and I want to thank all of you all of you the audience which without you all we could never have got here and we just love your feedback uh, we love your support uh we see all the letters we see all the seriousness with which uh you write to us and honestly i think there's no better motivation than having uh, you know a you bunch of loyal and fanatical readers following us month after month not any more just month after month but day after day or even hour after hour as now social media dictates so thanks uh, for watching shapur i think uh, uh, i think uh, great reminiscing And I think we've got to get back to work yeah. and here's to the next 25 years yeah. thanks for watching